Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Greek fire is a name given to an historical military weapon invented during the 7th century AD, the brainchild of the Byzantine Empire that gave them a distinct military advantage over their enemies, whether fighting on land or sea. Also known as sea fire, roman fire, liquid fire, sticky fire or manufactured fire, it was inextinguishable by water, and some sources even say that adding water just intensified the flames, apparently burning at well over 1000 degrees celsius. We learn about it from Byzantine military manuals, secondary historical sources, and also contemporary chroniclers of the period first mentioned by Theophans the Confessor sometime around 760 AD. He credits his creation to the chemist Salinusus of Heliopolis, although some sources say it was used even earlier in naval battles. Flaming weapons were of course nothing new, being used in warfare as early as the 9th century BC, with sulphur, petroleum and bitumen based mixtures, but Greek fire really was something different. Its creation came about when the empire was weakened by wars with the Sassanids of Persia. The Byzantines would go on to use it to great effect against the Arab fleets during the first and second Arab sieges of Constantinople, in naval battles against the Saracens, the Rus raids on the Bosporus in civil wars and so on. It was deployed through a tube called a siphon, which was placed on ships or on siege engines called chyrosiphons. There was also a portable handheld version, not dissimilar to a modern day flamethrower. There were also Greek fire filled jars and cranes called Gerania that would pour Greek fire onto enemy ships. The Byzantines themselves said the discovery of the substance was divine intervention, and they said the secret of its composition would never be revealed because it was shown and revealed by an angel to the great and holy first Christian Emperor Constantine. Sometime around 1100 AD, a Byzantine princess gave us a clue about the possible composition, saying, The fire is made by the following parts. From the pine and certain such evergreen trees, inflammable resin is collected. This is rubbed with sulphur and put into tubes of reed and is blown by men using it with violent and continuous breath. And then, in this manner, it meets the fire on the tip and catches light, and falls like a fiery whirlwind on the faces of the enemies. We know that Greek fire was a real deadly weapon, but from around 1204 AD, the secret of Greek fire appears to have been lost, and no chemist was able to replicate it again. Greek fire didn't make the Byzantines invincible, but it was known as a ship killer, a significant and potent weapon, sticking to anything and burning everything at very high temperatures. But enemies did learn and adapt. It had a limited range, and for naval use, it could only be used in a calm sea, and favourable wind conditions were needed. The Muslim navies soon learned to stay out of its range, and they also devised methods of protection such as felt or hides soaked in vinegar. My interest in Greek fire began a number of months ago when I was researching the Egyptian city of Tanis, and after seeing Jimmy's recent video on the Bright Insight channel, I wanted to give my own theory about the reason why many statues have this strange burnt appearance. Yes, I think it could be from Greek fire, damage possibly inflicted way after the dynastic era of history. The Byzantine period of Egypt, when the country was under the rule of Constantinople, was a very turbulent time due to lengthy battles with the Persians. The Persians captured Alexandria in the 7th century, but after a peace treaty, there was still a decade of violence that followed including the massacre of hundreds of monks by the Persians. I wonder if Tanis in the Nile Delta was the site of a hostile battle between the Persians and the Byzantines, and the scorched statues of Tanis are actually the effects of Greek fire. 
basalt, the volcanic rock, melts around 984 to 1260 degrees, and granite at about 1215 to 1260 degrees. So, if what we are seeing is heat damage on the old statues of Tanis, Greek fire could be a possible explanation. In the Byzantine era, it is thought that Tanis was rocked by a violent earthquake, destroying many of the giant statues and structures, and these date to around the 21st dynasty, many of them reused from the old city of Pyramuses. After the earthquake, it then became a small bishopric. But if the fire damage wasn't done in the 7th century, it could be from the 4th Crusader invasion between 1168 and 1169, and we actually do know there was much fighting and bloodshed in Tanis. After King Amalric of Jerusalem married a great-grandniece of a Byzantine emperor in 1167, the Crusaders and the Byzantines began negotiating an alliance against Egypt. And so, maybe the secret of Greek fire was shared. Crusaders under the leadership of Amalric I of Jerusalem did take Tanis by force, slaughtering all the people in the town, and I do wonder if Greek fire was used. An Egyptian historian from the 14th century said the defending vizier of Egypt distributed tens of thousands of naphtha pots and lightning bombs to the people of the capital city for stat. Naphtha is a flammable liquid hydrocarbon mixture, so we know that fire weapons were very much in use in these turbulent times. And we know that Tanis did feel the full brunt of the Crusaders, who were forming an alliance with the Byzantines the people that held the secret of Greek fire. The Tanis statues do look to be affected by localised fire damage, a partial melting or discoloration of the rock in specific places, and I can't think of another explanation based on what we know about the history and context of the ancient city of Tanis. To me, it's very possible the effects of the Byzantine Greek fire, or maybe another type of fire weapon. I'd love to know your thoughts, so please do comment below. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.